Got a 98 Ford Ranger in here. Got the typical uh, Isn't that nice? It's like the 3D issue. Ooh. Ooh. What's he hiding behind that black tape? Okay, he's got a check engine light. He didn't want me to do anything about the ABS, obviously, because if he did, he would have said something about it, so I'm not touching that. Um, yeah, number four misfire. I'm going to show you how to play with these things. It's a 4 -oh. These things get bad cylinder heads all the time. They burn exhaust seats. I don't think that's what's going on with this one. Um, first thing you want to do is identify where number 4 is because it's pulling a number 4 misfire. They're usually numbered. Yeah, on this, you can see... There's a number four right here. So it's this plug wire. And that goes to the driver's front. Um, the firing order identification is one, two, three, four, five, six on this vehicle. So what I do, I got a, I got a spark plug boot puller that I made and um, I riveted a wire onto it and I put it onto a ground. Ground, I make sure it's good and secure and it doesn't come off because that'll keep me from getting electrocuted. I would not recommend this for anybody. I'm a professional, I'm gonna say that because I've heard it on TV. Um, yeah, don't, don't, don't do what I'm doing right now because um, these coils are so strong that it literally could stop your heart and kill you. It's happened before. It's um very high, very high voltage wattage, whatever. But yeah, I do that because then I can I can run it and I can pull I can pull spark plug wires and not get electrocuted. There's other ones you can get. You might see them at parts stores. They're like this, they're just plastic. So they don't conduct electricity. I don't know. I don't trust that damn thing. Somebody gave it to me. And they said it worked great. But I've, I've been using this for a gazillion years. And I've never electrocuted myself with it. Once in a while this thing pops off the ground. And then, then you get it. So you got to watch that. Another thing too. If you actually decide to be as stupid as I am. And um, try, to, try to risk your life playing with... Um, secondary ignition um, whenever you do it you don't want to touch the body of the car keep your feet on the ground don't touch anything else but that ignition because as soon as you touch off on the vehicle you're grounded to that vehicle and that, that, that spark might take the path of least resistance and it'll get you so just don't just don't do it. Just just don't do it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this off. I'm going to run the car. I'm going to see if we get a spark. And I don't think it's going to. So let's just see what happens. So it's pulling a number four misfire, and it's got a spark. What do I do? What do I do? It's a solid miss too, it's really bad.
okay, that was nice, fun, and loud. I took the spark plug out, and I just put it on the spark plug wire and ran the dang thing. Um, first thing I did, too, was I, I checked to see if there was spark coming out of the wire, and there was. I got a spark plug tester um, right here. And I put that on there, and it was getting a spark, so I did a compression test, and... Yeah, I was getting about 160 pounds. When you got bad valves on these things, old burnt exhaust seats, it kind of throws you off doing a compression test. You really got to do a leak down. And yeah, if you try to do a leak down and compare it to other cylinders, that might throw you off too, because a lot of times all these things are bad. But yeah, for some reason, this isn't working. The spark plug. And I took it off and. I looked at it, I don't really see any carbon tracking or anything anywhere. And uh, I don't know what the heck's going on here, so um, I'm going to take a spark plug out of a different cylinder and see if the misfire goes away on this cylinder. And if it does, I'm going to get plugs and wires for it and do a tune up. I'm going to try to find one that's easy to get to and just swap them around. Okay, I um I swapped over number four and number six spark plugs, which is the one in the front and the one in the rear on this side. So then I got number number six is here and number four is here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the vehicle and I'm gonna let it idle down and then I'm gonna pull these plug wires and I'm gonna see if, if the cylinder falls out. Um, I should have a miss now a number a number six and no miss on number four if I got a bad plug wire or a bad spark plug I mean it's got a solid miss I can hear it falling out now. So that cylinder's working. And this one's doing nothing. So it's got a bad spark plug. It's got a bad spark plug. That's something you hardly ever see on a vehicle. Especially because I didn't notice any carbon tracking or anything. So anytime you got a bad spark plug too and you see these old crusty wires, you just do it all. Plugs and wires. I'm going to do a tune-up to this thing and it'll run fine. Hey, I got some OE plugs. <clears throat> I always go OE because that's what's supposed to be in there. You might be wondering too, hey, you know, I got a bad plug. Why don't I just replace a plug? Um... The biggest reason why is because these are factory plug wires and this spark plug's ether fouled. What ether fouling is, is gasoline or a foreign substance usually gets embedded in the porcelain and the porcelain no longer insulates and it takes a path of least resistance instead of going through the electrode and it just it, it just grounds right out on, on the on the sides and just grounds out to the block and makes a misfire. Um, there's underlying reasons usually that that happens. It just normally a spark plug just doesn't go bad on its own like this. Um, it looks like somebody already replaced the plugs too once, but they never put they never put plug wires in it. It's 230,000 mile vehicle and it's got factory plug wires in it. It might have an issue with it. It might have an issue with a coil. I don't know. Um, secondary ignition, the, the, the biggest failure with a coil or a secondary ignition failure is from your plug wires. Um, secondary ignition failure is the secondary winding in your coil and your plug wires and your spark plugs that's all your secondary ignition and if you have a problem like that it can cause fouling in a plug um, I don't know for sure why this thing is fouled but I'm just ruling everything out by putting new stuff in it I mean in a pinch you could just put a plug in it but I'm not going to 
Another thing that can happen when you got bad secondary ignition is you can backfeed power into your primary and and into the driver for your coil. Um, I have seen, especially on Fords, I've seen your computers, the driver in the ECM go bad because of really, really bad ignition wires. Um, I, I had that happen once, it was so bad I turned all the lights off and, and I would run the car and I would actually see just sparks all over the place from bad plug wires. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to do this plugs and wires because I don't want any problems with this and if he has another problem with a misfire or whatever, I can rule out the fact that he's got bad plugs and wires. You know, he might have a bad coil. In a bad coil, it might it might it might be an intermittent problem that fouled out the plug. It might be in a wire, which I I don't I doubt, but I don't know for sure. So you know, I just got to do this just to rule everything out. Um, so there's that. Pretty much the only tools I think I'm going to need is a spark plug socket and a, maybe a wobble um, extension. Maybe a swivel, maybe a wrench for the for the spark plug socket. A couple different extensions or whatever, whatever. Um, I'm not going to get too much into detail with this. You know, this side you got to snake wires through here and stuff, and the other side's pretty straightforward. Everything's buried just a little bit, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go to town on it. Technically, you don't need anti-seize on these because you got a cast iron cylinder head. I don't ever gap these plugs either. I just look at them and make sure they look good. Um, platinum plugs, you never want to touch the electrode on them, ever. You never touch that platinum tip. You can wreck the plug. So you just look at them, make sure they're not smashed or bent up and stick them in the hole. They're all pre-gapped. The only time they're the only time they're messed up usually is when somebody drops the box. We'll drop it on the floor or something and then then it bends it. If it does, it's usually best just to get a different one instead of trying to fix it. And of course, anytime you put spark plugs in a car, you always want to start them by hand. You see how nice and square that is? That tells me right there I don't got to touch it. That's how they're supposed to look. Yeah, these only need to get torqued to like 15 or 20 foot pounds too, so you don't need a reef on them or anything. Yeah, you run into stuff like this sometimes too. That ain't no good. That's a lesson, no good. Yeah, the way they run some of these is a little on the cheesy side. I'd rather have everything go over the top because you're just taking a chance of getting something to ground out. I don't like spark plug wires touching anything that might be a ground. And they are all over on here the way these are routed, which is really, really stupid. I'm going to take this uh, an EVAP solenoid on here. It's going to be easier for me to route these if I take this off. Two 7mm bolts. Just kinda, I'm just going to flop this out of the way a little bit. There, like that. I can get at these fairly easily. Yeah, I got an EGR tube in my way on this side, so this is where that wobble extension comes in kind of handy. I'm going to bend that just a little bit. I don't like it. It's touching metal stuff.
Now this thing was over here. And uh, these plug wires aren't hitting anything or rubbing on anything on that side. I'm going to use it over here because there's a couple wires I don't like. I don't want them wiggling around and I don't want them rubbing on stuff. So I'm just going to put everything in a different spot. They really got these crammed in in a bad way. I don't like the way these Fords run wires. I just don't like it. I just want to make sure nothing's going to rub on anything and wear holes in anything or anything. let it idle down and then I'll put it in gear because if you put your foot on a brake and put it in reverse or drive you really know if it's missing because you'll really hear it feel it. Okay I'm doing a power balance test. Um, anytime there's a fluctuation it's it's a, it's a misfire, a slight misfire. It should be a smooth line all the way across if this thing purrs like a kitty cat. It obviously doesn't. It's an old 230,000 mile engine though so one other thing I can do too is get in the car and put my foot on the brake and put it in gear, see what it looks like. I'm going to do that. There, that's with it in gear. That's pretty smooth. There's no major spikes. You know, it's good enough Ford stuff. That's not bad at all, really, for a little six-cylinder. Alright, I'm going to call this good.